A little bit of a delay. I think it's like a 30 second delay. Thank you. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Especially with you. Hey, 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 hey. How's the sound there, Sue? How are we sounding out there in Beach Talk Radio Land? What number you got? I have two. There, there we go. Oh, I forgot to do something. Of course. I forgot to do something. Oh, I'm not going to shut it off. Of course. I'm not going to shut it off. I need to do that. They can still see us here. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll behave myself. This is... Look at you. Talking water. Two minutes, everybody. Two minutes. It was a very busy week. It's Lee County. It's Lee County. I need to talk about that. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Bruce final is blue. Gonna need a rope to get up there. Oh, thank you, Jan. One minute, everybody. One minute. Our guest was. No, we're still on. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to move over. Why? Where's he gonna sit? Let You're more in the no, he's not sitting in the middle. Move your crap. Oh, this is my crap. One minute, everybody. One minute. Hello. You better know. Hello, Michelle. I'm switching then. Michelle works at a Margaritaville in oh crap, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. No. In Minnesota. Well, yeah, she works at a TPI property, not in town. I'm sure okay. she'll. Uh, Type this it one's in there. low. Less than a minute. Less than a minute. We always Ooh. start on time because the first rule of podcasting is to be consistent. <laughs> it's, it's actually nice here, Bob. We're sitting inside because um, it was a little chilly, but it's also going to be busy here, so we didn't want to uh, take away from everybody making money here. And there's construction outside that we're going to talk about. All right, 30 seconds. Quite, quite on the set here. This is Beach Talk Radio. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all ships at sea. This is your captain speaking, Mean Gene. Mean Gene. The following will be a test of ship's whistle, the sonar alarm, the cable alarm, and the atomic attack alarm. Live from Peach Time Out in the heart of Times Square, you're listening to Beach Talk Radio with Kim and Ed Ryan. And hello, everybody, and welcome to Beach Talk Radio, episode number 98, two episodes away from 100, if you do the math like that. Today is Saturday, February the 8th, 2020, and we're broadcasting live from Peach Time Out on Fort Myers Beach, Peach Time Out. Table 23 is where we usually are, but we're inside for a couple of reasons. We're inside because uh, it's a little bit chilly. It's, it's starting to warm up. We also know it's going to be crowded because it's season, and we want to make sure that Terry makes a lot of money today. <laughs> and the other thing is uh, we don't care if Angie makes money. And the other thing is there's construction going on outside, which we'll talk about. It's not the town's construction. No. Nope. It's Lee County construction. So a uh, big thank you to all our sponsors, Pete's Time Out, FMB Designs and Remodeling, Shrucker's at the Golf Core, Golf Core, Golf Core and uh, Cottage Bar, 
or the Gulf Shore and Cottage Bar and Fort Myers Tiki Tours. And stay tuned all morning long because we will be having more giveaways. We are giving away two tickets to the Jay and Kylie show at the Gulf Shore Cottage Bar. And we also have tickets to give away to the Fort Myers Tiki Tours. So stay tuned for all that. Our first guest this morning is Dr. Bill Mitch. Doc, thanks for coming on. We appreciate your time always. Hey, glad to come here. And you are a big advocate of the water. And uh, Doc has uh, been very involved in water quality issues. He's a professor. Now, you correct me if I get this wrong in yes. any way. A professor and eminent scholar, which makes you a big freaking deal, uh, at the Everglades Wetland Research Park, FGCU Naples. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. And this is the second time you've been on the show. The first time you actually drove your car through <laughs> Times Square because for some reason the uh, the blocking pole wasn't up there and you just decided you were going to park right over here, which was uh, interesting. That, yeah. It's um, okay. But this time you're, uh, you're parked fine uh, and you're ready to rock and roll and you have uh, a big event coming up, a two-day right. event coming up to talk about the water. So sure. tell us what that's about. Well, we're going to have a workshop down in my uh, lab. We have a big auditorium in Naples at the Naples Botanical Garden and it's going to be a, a workshop on uh, wetlands and how they can clean up water and they are the natural solution to all these problems that we have about water quality if people just put a bunch of wetlands back. And that's going to be coming up pretty soon February 21st 20th, 20th and 21st. 20, yeah it's a two night uh, mm -hmm. deal we didn't want to have people sitting for six hours so we right. spread it over two evenings and it's going to be six to nine down yes. at yeah. at the naples area and there's a is it a thirty dollar cost for both nights uh thirty dollars is is the only fee but that okay. covers both nights yes all right and, and so what are you guys going to be talking about down there well we've been studying different ways of uh recreating wetlands in an agricultural landscape to take advantage of uh their ability to clean up water, but at the same time, we don't want to penalize the farmers. So what we're trying to develop is a business model where farmers get paid to clean up water just as if they were growing sugar. In fact, we think we can make it very competitive with crops. And so is that, can, can you explain to us what is a wetlaculture? Well, that's, that's a term that we coined and it's a combination of wetlands plus agriculture. Okay. So it would be a landscape that would have both systems, and you would use the wetland to take the pollution out of the water in the landscape, and then you flip the land. I use flip, not rotate. Yep. Flip the land to agriculture by pulling a plug, and basically the agriculture then uses the nutrients that the wetland captured, and we don't have to add more fertilizer. That's the whole point. Just okay. get off this opiate. So the so the um, the wetland would would capture in in the soil of the wetland it right. would capture the phosphorus yes. and and then you would flip it and then the agriculture good lord would use and and, that. and drop the water levels also and, uh -huh. uh, and and then of course you can plant crops like corn or sugar or whatever and then they can use the existing enriched soil right. rather than dump more stuff right in. so what we're doing is recycling and therefore you don't have to add more fertilizer. Now, we have experiments going uh, both in Ohio and Florida on this yes. thing, and it, it seems to be working for the first phase. The wetland does capture the nutrients, so we're going to flip some of our experiments in the next year or two and see if we plant corn seeds or uh, sugar or whatever uh, and see if it grows. And if it doesn't, we'll wait two more years and see if it works again. <laughs> now, you mentioned Ohio. So this, this conference that you're doing in February, it, it's... A similar one or it's the same one that was done recently in Ohio is that correct? Right. We, we received uh, I'm up in Ohio in the summer and we received National Science Foundation grant to run this conference and so we ran it it went well everybody loved it and so on but it's a great model for us to use down here so we're basically copying that uh, same uh, speakers and so on right and that model was for Lake Erie up there because they have Primarily. okay but it was run by us, by FGCU, right. so we had leadership in it, and uh, and and we talked about wetlands all over the world, actually, or I'm sorry, harmful algal blooms all over the world. So uh, really, it's generic. But but down here, we will emphasize the problems in Florida. Right, but the, the, there are some similarities between the algal blooms there and, oh, and here in Lake Okeechobee. Major similarities. Okay. They're the same. It's the same same problem. 
All right, so I was doing a little bit of research, and um, can you explain a little bit when they talk about what's legacy phosphorus? Well, that term is often used to uh, explain when you put fertilizer on the land year after year after year after year, it just builds up in the soil. It's the legacy. It's, it's, it's not used, or it's, it's, there's so much fertilizer in our agricultural landscapes that we could run, you know, they, they could probably plant for 10 years without fertilizer, but but no, that's the legacy. It's there. It's stuck, and, and we've got to get that down. That's the that's the bulk of the problem. That we just have a a, a polluted landscape. And so the wetlands are going to be one of, not the only solution to to cleaning right. up the water, but right. one of the solutions to act as a natural filtration. Right. And, and get it out. And so the idea is threefold to, to uh, be able to grow crops be able to and they would be ecological crops they could probably charge more money if they said they did it by wetland culture right uh, to uh, uh, have a low uh, better water quality downstream of the wetlands um, and then to uh, reward the farmers for for taking the pollution out of the water just like we would reward them for growing corn now, at the com at the workshop, are they going to be talking about any of the other kind of solutions that? Not that so much. They they get a lot of coverage. I mean, they're called best management practices. And, okay. Uh, we're we're wetland people, and there's you know our motives are twofold. Number one, we want to clean the water, but number two, we since we lost by some counts, eighty seven percent of the world's wetlands, eighty seven percent are gone, and, and uh, I'd like to put a few back. So this is also to increase our wetlands in the landscape. All right, dear. Did you run through the uh, roster of some of the speakers that you're going to have? Well, I know um, uh, Chauncey's going to be there, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chauncey Goss is going to come as in the welcoming session. Mm -hmm. So I've got several people uh, involved in that, and then uh, I've got. Uh, you don't have it memorized? No, I don't have it memorized. Sorry. Oh. I, I, but, well, there's a, some of the names I looked have, at. We, we have, Bing uh, Bing. Yeah, yeah, Bing Bing Chang, my graduates. Two of the five speakers uh, yeah. are formerly PhD students of mine that will be graduating this year, and I feel like we should show them off. Yeah. And bright. then Lauren or Lauren Laura, Griffith. Lauren Griffith, she's one of my graduate students. And uh, then we have a speaker from Notre Dame, uh, the University of Notre Dame, who is working with us on this business model. He's in the business school at Notre Dame and, and he's just got very exciting ideas about how how we can reward reward if that's the right term farmers who take incentivize yeah yeah, yeah. now have have farmers have there been farmers or industries that have shown an interest in this as of yet or is it yeah we we're, it's not a finished product yet the, okay the, we know we're, we're doing the biology and chemistry now and that's getting we're getting good numbers now we got to develop the business model but we've had people say, where do I sign up? And we're going to have an environmental bond so people can invest. And they're not going to get rich, but they could get a couple percent uh, uh, return on investment. Uh, so that's the idea is an environmental bond. And some of the w money that w will flow to the farmers and the other money will flow to, to whoever's building the wetlands. So. Would you say that the water quality has improved since the new governor came on board? Uh, I don't think they've had been able to put any projects in in yet. I mean, this is too early, but I know that the governor is very interested in supporting some uh, uh, projects. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to get one, not not for this wetland culture, but more traditional, uh, I guess you'd say, destruction of algae <laughs> projects, you know, taking the symptoms. But the symptoms are not what we need to deal with. We need to deal with a cause, and the cause is the 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 saturated nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus. Mm -hmm. In fact, nitrogen's the problem for red tide, and uh, uh, phosphorus is more for the blue-green algae in the freshwater. So why is it that the state's so opposed to uh, to eliminating Roundup? That's a, Yeah, that's interesting. That was on CNN, I think, yesterday, and I saw one of my quotes in there. Uh, <laughs> really? I don't watch CNN, so I didn't see your quote. But what's the answer to that? What is uh? It, it's just the way they do things. It's, for so long, they've used chemicals, you know, mm -hmm. poisons, I can call them, to kill plants and animals and stuff they don't like. And we're finding out that's a they, very they use chemicals to kill animals they don't like. Well, well where? It, you know, the, 
the, the stuff that they're using oh, is dangerous. Oh, accidentally killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, you're not yeah, squirting no. around up at animals. To, no. No, not necessarily. No. But although there are chemicals to get rid of fish you don't like and things like that, that's been done. Hmm. But no, we're mainly talking about a poison that's used to kill plants, herbicides. Why don't people just get on their hands and knees and pull the weeds out? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't that be a safer yeah. uh, for yeah. the environment? But because it's so easy to squirt, you know. Yeah. Uh, I use a rake in, or in your in your driveway or in a big yeah. farm. That thing. I like to pull weeds. I just think yeah. it's better for the environment to of get on your. I mean, it's good exercise and yeah. bad for the back sometimes. But well, that's one other option. Are there any other? I don't think organic the vinegar, I think options. The, to, I think the vinegar thing's up. a myth. Uh, no, well, not really. My but house again, like gotta, vinegar. There's a reason those quote weeds and some of them are not weeds. They're just opportunistic plants. Uh, come into sites, and uh, the reason is we've got all these nutrients in. So it's a these two problems are very much connected. Uh, if you want, if you want a a landscape that's beautiful, rushes and grasses and so on, like the Everglades, you better get the nutrients out. Yeah. What is an algae bloom? Can you define it? It's just a overgrowth of the algae is always in the water, especially in the in the ocean and so on, it's, it's called plankton. It just floats there and you don't see yeah. it because it's not very high concentration. Isn't the plankton the stuff that gets stuck on the boats too? No, I guess. Well, it makes the boat slippery. Well, it sticks to the bottom th of the boat. That, that may be plankton, but it's probably in high concentrations. What about stuck to like the bottom of a dock on a lake? Like, is that plankton? Like, if Those you were in a lake, it can be. It because can you know be, what happened? It... Once I was in a triathlon and I started to panic. And I thought I was going to drown. I was in the middle of a lake. Yeah. And so I just Sorry, quit. Man. I just quit. I started swimming to the right toward the weeds. And I saw a dock. And I tried to climb up the dock. But my legs, my feet were slipping on the bottom yeah. of, I think there was plankton or something yeah, on the, the bottom. Well, and I couldn't a, get up. It's probably, it's called benthic algae or attached algae. Or oh, wow. All sorts that's of probably term. why the bottom of my feet is uh, yeah. the way they are now. <laughs> hmm. Could be. So how far away do you think this is? To, to be putting in place how, how far down the road well are we with our wet lake culture we're, we have two or three years at experimental level where okay. we have many little see our test tubes are not test we can't right. put a wetland in a test tube but we can put them in 100 gallon tubs so we have the experiment with 100 gallon tubs rather than test tubes and that's and, a big test get, tube yeah we're getting we're getting some very good results uh at most of our sites of nutrient retention in these tubs so we can extrapolate that to mm -hmm. a very large scale but we need a very large scale demonstration project to show that it works so, so you're in you're in the in the research development now like you're in-house yes. and then you're going to take once collecting data and that all goes well then you're going to do a trial in an actual air, yes. land mass and area. We're, we're looking for a friendly farmer, I can okay. announce that publicly, who would be willing to try this. You heard it here first. And if we get, I don't if think we're we able to farmers. raise money, donation or whatever, we will pay the farmer for cleaning the water and the use of his or her land. Hmm. Uh, How much land we, would you need? We're, we're thinking 100 acres to make it right. large enough to be a demonstration project. Do you think U.S. Sugar is going to pony up that land? Uh, they said not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, but, but maybe they're they a non-friendly farmer. We need well, a friendly farmer. Yes, and 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 uh, and we're looking for uh, by donations, donations right. to my lab. Uh, we're looking for enough cash so that we can do one of these hundred-acre wetlands. And if we get enough funding, uh, donation then funding, then, then we well, what about it. you mentioned about grants and that kind of stuff? Is that available for this? Um, We've not tried th this wetlaculture is such a new thing. Okay. That it's it, we we've got to publish some results at these little tubs. If we get th those published, then I think we have some uh, something to say about well, we need to go to a big scale. And but but getting a grants two or three year project. Yeah. And we don't have that. I'd like to get one in the ground in the next year or so if we can find somebody who's going to cooperate. Last time we spoke, you were uh, telling us about the wetlands and how. Uh, the wetlands are disappearing, but there were some projects in the work to uh, works to add more wetlands to the earth. I guess. Well, well, it, my it, question yeah. is, 
have we made any progress in improving or increasing in the, last year? the wetlands yeah. no. since you drove down no, we, Times uh, Square last time? And I think what I was talking about at that time is, is still our goal. Uh, if you take these two projects, I'm, I'm not going to do it everywhere in the country yet, but we have the nutrient problem down here in South Florida, and they have a nutrient problem on Lake Erie. Let's just take those two. For both of those, we have estimated to solve those problems, we need to restore 100,000 acres at both places. Oof. 100,000 acres. So we need 100,000 more acres. And then uh, in addition to that, there's a plan now to uh, build a reservoir. I don't know if you've heard of that thing. It's called the yes. EA Reservoir. Yep. And, and we publicly said that that's an interesting project, but way, way under wetland. If I could use that as a... I don't word. know what that means. Under wetland? Under wetland. In it's other words, underneath the wetland? Under, no, it's... Poorly designed, oh. And not oh. nearly it's under, not enough. Gotcha. Not enough. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. enough by order of magnitude. Mm -hmm. They they're going to put six thousand or six yeah six thousand acres of new wetlands, and we we're saying more 50, like fifty to hundred. Right. Mm. So go ahead. No, so this um, the workshop. Who are you looking to attract with well, with having this workshop? You know, in uh, all the public things we do at my lab are for the general public. Okay. Number one. Uh, we also have a, a class that's getting one credit hour for our series this uh, this winter, and uh, so that's thirty or forty people right there from the class. So it's a combination of, uh, and then there will be lots of scientists that are, are signing up because they want to they want to hear what this wetland culture is all about. So in a way, we're the, we're finally going public. Okay. And I'm bringing my team in, and that includes a a. a, a Professor from Notre Dame, as I said, is does the business model, but also a professor from Ohio State, and she's one of the best uh, microbiologists and uh, a person who can deal with the he the public health issues of, of. Right. She's probably one of the best in the country. So we're yeah, because there was some there was some interest in that, you know, with the last big yeah. algal bloom that we had, with people having respiratory issues and what were the long-term effects right, of that right and, and then with blue green algae you got the right. neurological diseases that are being connected to i mean this is real serious stuff so um yes yeah, uh, so she will contribute to that discussion certainly so it's open to the general public and it's it's going to be geared to the general public and scientists because that can yeah. be a little bit of a it well of a jargon gap there no, no we tell our All speakers right. they've got to be able to talk to the public about okay. their science and that's what I train my graduate students to do they're not they just know that if you if you're just talking to other scientists you're not accomplishing very much right yeah because people people will turn off if they're not right. you know they're not understanding it now I was reading a little bit about that there's a um, th there's a, a US plan for Lake Erie and fixing that be that seems to span from 2018 to 2023, sort of a, a plan in place. Is there anything like that for Lake O or no? I mean, I didn't find one, so. Well, the plan for Lake O is to dump it down to the Everglades. That's the one we're talking about that doesn't okay. have a, if we, we could, of course, pump it down the Everglades, but if they don't build these 100,000 additional acres of wetlands or 50,000, well, yeah. then, then they're going to trash the Everglades. That's what I'm concerned about. Okay. All right. You back now. You, you ran out of here. Did I you just have to go to make, the bathroom? No, well, of course, but I wanted to make sure that Bruce knows that we're inside in case he's wandering around because last time, well, the last time both of you were here, our studio was outside. But yeah, right. We're a little inside now. I would like to change things up. Anything else that yeah. you wanted to go over? Make sure we get out there to the nine people that watch our show. Oh, uh, stop. Well, I think we've, hundreds. we've made great progress on our research in this area of wetland culture, and we want to show it off to the south florida people and that's what this is all about and, and again for anybody joining the show late you have a two-day seminar right. coming up and when? you have to sign in on our website now i've got a, i used to have a very simple website address that i could just say now i i don't even remember it okay so they should type in everglades wetland research park in in the google search. in the google okay and they will come they will see our site and then you go on there and right on the front there's an announcement of this meeting and you go there and you can register online you're not making it easy for people well <laughs> so uh, Google, what is. if they uh what if they uh that well we'll put it on our page if yeah. people want more information for it we'll put it right on there for it. yeah the just 20th say, uh, and the google, 21st google uh everglades, everglades wetland wetlands. research park gotcha 
Gotcha. Down in Naples. And that's next weekend. Next that's weekend. A, no, it's not the weekend. No. It's Thursday, Thursday and Friday. Friday. Well, the 20th and the 21st. Yes. Gotcha. Two, right. two evenings. Six cool. to 9 p.m. Uh, awesome. We ran the one we did in Ohio was a full day event, but we didn't want to do that to, to Naples. They won't stay for uh, six hours. So we. <laughs> they don't have the attention span, <laughs> apparently. Well, no, no, they're in no, Ohio. What the hell else they're... are they going to do? They can't yeah. go outside. Right. Uh, Ohio, it was, a, it was a beautiful day, but we. Uh, we it's a long it, yeah. day. That, that's but, a lot of information yeah, to exactly. So we just split it in two days. I think it'll be. Yeah, chunks. Yeah, we need chunks. But but to have uh, uh, Chauncey Goss. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is the, he's he's, the man. He's the man. Yeah. for the South Florida Water Management District. Uh, that's extraordinary. We got other people. We've got the uh, one of the guys who founded the Captains for Clean Water. Oh, great! Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys are great. Oh, we still guys. haven't been able to get them on. They're so yeah. busy. Yeah. Well, they're going to be at our event, and, and so we've got some high caliber people. In the welcome, and then we're going to have a panel at the end to try to summarize things. Great. All right, Doc, thanks well, for thank coming on. Well, thank you so much Appreciate for coming guys. down. No, coming I'm down very much, and you have until t I, I paid your meter till 1030, so if you want to wander around, spend some money in Times Square, have at it. Yeah. <laughs> have at it. I might do that. All right. But thanks again, a lot. Thank happy, you so happy much. to be on your program. Have a great thank weekend. You. We okay. appreciate it very much. And uh, that's Dr. Bill Mitch, our, our good friend, uh, Mr. Water, and he uh, is going to uh, have a two-day seminar with a bunch of other water experts, and we will make sure that we post all of that information. And right now, what we're going to do, dear, is we're going to give away tickets to the, uh, the Kylie and Jay show, uh, which is coming up. Uh, we made a mistake. About not being able to be around for that show. I know you messed. We're going to be up. out of town for that show you on the twenty eighth. Whatever is that the twenty eighth? Let me yeah. check the date. It's yes. let's see. Yeah, it's twenty ninth actually. So that's coming up in three weeks. Three weeks from today, you'll be able to see Kylie Morgan and Jay Allen. Now they are both signed to uh, record labels. Uh, so that's pretty darn cool. And you have to go and get tickets. It's not a free show. You have to get tickets. So you want to uh, either win them right now or you want to go on the, uh, the Shuckers website, the Shuckers Facebook page, and get all the information for that. But right now, the phone number you need to know is 239. Let's see if we can work this technology, dear. 239 247 Three eight three three. I have a oh, question. they're gonna call your yeah. They're gonna call my phone, and I'm gonna try and figure out how to put it up. So the the question is, what hometown? Where is Jay Allen from? Not the town, just the um, state. You don't need to know the city or the town. What state is Jay Allen from? If you can call us in, the first person to get through on the phone lines two three nine two four seven. 3833 is the number to call. Shuckers at the Gulf Shore, the Cottage Bar, and the no, we have a call from, uh, let's see if we can make this work. We have a call from Minneapolis. Wow. Hello. I bet it's chilly there. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. And I see I did it again. You did it again. Let's see if, let's see if I can still. Oh, I hung up on the person. Sorry. It's always the can, second can person you try that it again? gets through. Try again. Give us another call from Minneapolis. Caller from Minneapolis trying to win tickets to see Jay Allen and Kylie Morgan at Shuckers. They're open daily from 8 a.m. Uh, for breakfast, serving lunch and dinner until closing, offering spectacular sunset views. Shuckers happy hour is... Why are you looking at your phone? What's Because I wanted to make sure the dates of that. Because it's the 29th. I, it is I the 29th. It. It's the 29th, and we'll be in Boston visiting... Oh, I should have probably said that. Uh, we're going to be out of town that weekend. Um... Uh, the world famous cottage bar opens daily at noon until midnight. I mean, how long does it take for somebody to type in Google where Jay Allen is from? That's it. Shouldn't take that long, but they're probably figuring like this moron. Well, no, they're just they're, now, the they the, yes, right, now they don't want to. Yes, now they don't want to come. Let's try and call, call the person back. back and see if we can. There we go. See, how, so you call reversed. us. We'll hang up on yeah, you, you and then us. we'll call you back. Uh, yeah, that's right. All right. Let's see now. Now they're all nervous. They're not going to answer the phone. Yes. This is, uh, Good morning. Hi, who's this? This is Carol Jacoby. Carol, how are you doing? I'm doing good. You Thank you. No. We're so sorry he hung up on you. Yeah. Well, he, he really didn't because I didn't know the answer to the question. <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> Did you get a chance to look it up yet? Did you have a chance to Google it? Uh, well, no, I'm trying. <laughs> okay, well, I'll finish reading the ad while you're Googling it's it. It's not Florida. We right, can tell right, you that. Right, right, Well, uh, I didn't think so, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and are Google. You, are now you're are you in Minneapolis now? 
No. Okay. I'm on the beach now. So <laughs> why do you have a Minneapolis number? Is it just your old phone? Well, or? I'm from Minneapolis. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm from Minnesota. Gotcha. So. You know, you're like the third person I've run into today that's from Minnesota. Everybody's down here. By the way, it's going to be sunny and 75 today on the beach. So before we uh, allow a Carol to find uh, where Jay's from on Google, okay. I want to tell everybody that this construction that's going on out here, they just kind of started this construction by like right by the pier where you would walk over. And uh, oh, Bruce is calling. Bruce, we're here. Let me see if I can get Bruce on the air. Let's see. Hold on, Carol. I'll be right back with you. Okay. All right. Hi, Bruce. We're uh, we're on the air waiting for you to come down. Yeah, where are you? We're inside. We're inside. Inside where? Inside, inside Pete's. Pete's. Time out. Oh, okay. all right. Here we'll he comes. There. I see him oh, now. There he is now. Oh, that was all fun. Right, bye. Trying bye. to learn how to work the technology. Now watch me hang up on Carol. Carol, you there? Take her off hold. Take all her right. off hold. All right. I'll take her off hold. Carol, oh, you there? Sure. There yeah. we go. All right, Carol. What's the I'm answer? I'm trying to read through his thing. I don't have her. <laughs> Carol. I'm reading his website. It's not on here. Carol, you're you're right, Carol. <laughs> you are exactly right. He's from Iowa. It was wonderful for you to pick that out of the oh, thin there. air like that. Yes. <laughs> Carol, he is from I'm Iowa. From and Iowa. you you're going to see Jay Allen and Kylie Morgan at the Shuckers at the Cottage on the 29th. Yes, so of February. Congratulations, yeah, Carol. Wonderful. Thank and you I, very much. I have to ask you a serious question. Why are you yes. wasting time listening to our show or watching our show? Why? I listen to you every week. Why, Carol? that's the only way I learn about what's happening on the beach when I'm in Minnesota. Well, oh, thank nice. you so much. That's so nice. Very Look nice. how informative. Thank you, Carol. Yes, and you uh, we'll, get, you. we'll get in touch with you later on to tell you how to get the tickets and all that. All right. Thank All right. you. Enjoy the show. Bye thank now. you very much. Have a great day and a great weekend. All right, everybody. All right. I'm going to scoot out. All right. And then I'm going to add my two cents from the table. Okay, great. <laughs> from the table. I don't know what that means. Well, from the table over there. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've been giving you uh, uh, a look at all the candidates for the, uh, the Fort Myers Beach Town Council uh, for the last uh, five weeks. And right now we're uh, honored to be joined on the show uh, by... Uh, Council member Bruce Butcher. Bruce, thanks for coming. I know I probably should have told you we were going to be inside. Uh, uh, and, and Maybe you moved to uh, St. Tini Plaza or no. something. Do you I want me to hold the mic out. the whole time or you got it? <laughs> well, that's okay. You can hold it. <laughs> All right. So what I need you to do is I am going to play something before we get started, but you're going to need to listen. So put your coffee right here. You're going to need to listen in one ear so you can hear it. I want you to hear this, and then I want you to uh, – you just put one ear. It's short. The entire audience is going to hear it. There you go. You ready? You tell me when you're ready. All right. This was from February of 2019. The word on the street is you're not going to run again. Is that, have you made your mind up yet? Well, as long as I'm still married, yeah, which I intend to be, uh -huh. it would be unlikely that I would run again. Then this will be your last year. Yeah. I, I had three goals when I ran. That was get a sterile boulevard done, get the finances correct, and get TPI, or not TPI necessarily, but get something happening downtown, get this redevelopment going. So I had three things that I was interested in. All right. So what has, I'll take those, what changed from when you were on uh, back in February to today or a few weeks ago when you decided to run again? What happened? I needed the money. <laughs> By the way, how much do council members get paid? Maybe 16000 16000 And the mayor gets a tad more, right? Like maybe nineteen or something like that? Or is it all the same? A, a little bit more, yeah. So what, it, what, what, seriously, though, what, what happened? Well, you know, th things are, like I said a year ago, we're making really good progress on those three things. However, TPI has not yet broken ground. We're still having debates about the foot of the bridge traffic. Uh, street lights aren't resolved yet, but the finances are great. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm also on two committees, the Horizon Council for uh, Lee County and the uh, MPO Executive Board. And uh, they're doing some very interesting things right now as well. Uh, for instance, they're looking at the 2045 long-range traffic plan basically is what you would call it for the MPO mm -hmm. and they have to do that every so many years every five years so this is the fifth year and they're working on that 
And uh, I like participating in that. And if I get back elected to council, I hope I can continue with those uh, committee things. First, so let's talk about one issue that you really are seem frustrated about and, and talk about a lot uh, at the meetings, and it's the lights. It's the lights on a stereo. For, explain to our audience why that can't get resolved. It just seems like it's been going on for years, and there are still no lights. And somebody, hopefully, will never it will never happen, but it just seems like... Somebody's going to get hurt. Well, it, it, it's inevitable that somebody will get hurt unless something changes. Uh, I came down the beach last night between 6.30 and 7. A guy runs across mid-block. Uh, if he hadn't had a little white dog with him, there's no way I would have seen him. Hmm. And um, it's, just, it's just crazy out there. But... A few years ago, I, I started working on this when I got on the safety committee in 2013 when the two people were killed down by Centini Plaza. And um, so I've, <laughs> it just drives me crazy to drive down the street at night with the problems. So we got the, uh, through the safety committee in the town, we spoke to Lee County and the MPO, and they agreed to do a lighting study. Mm -hmm. And this was several years ago. And it took probably two years after they agreed to do the lighting study to get it funded and finally do it. And that lighting study ended up costing about $100,000 plus or minus 20 grand. So they did the, the study and the first attempt at that study was not very good. And I complained about it and the town manager complained about it. And, um, and the MPO review people complained about it so they went back to them and said do it again so they went back and did it again they came up with a study they came up with a plan and um, it's to me a, an excellent plan because it provides adequate lighting north to south bridge to bridge uh, for a serial boulevard but some people resisted the study because it's 4,000 cct which means what what does that mean uh, it's it's the Kelvin color code, okay. which is the burning of a filament, a titanium or something, and if it, at different degrees, it gives a different color. So some people were concerned, well, it wasn't turtle friendly, and some people were concerned that it had glare and it had uh, destroyed uh, dark skies. But uh, those are unfounded uh, with the uh, electronics and the physics of the lenses that they have today they can concentrate the light through it in a very clear direct pattern it doesn't shine back up into the sky uh it protects uh, against the dark sky concerns okay i, I don't mean to interrupt you yeah. but do you realize that you're getting so deep in the weeds of the lighting that the people the they just want to know why the hell there aren't lights and is it because we can't figure out the cost between the cost protecting the turtles making sure it doesn't harm human beings well, all of that okay well here, here's the fact so so at the end of the day there's probably there's three simple choices and a fourth comp complicated choice FPNL only offers a 4,000 K a 3,000 K and an amber light that's turtle friendly the and unfortunately, you have to get into the weeds on this because the, the 4,000 K, let me tell you this, is the cheapest by far because uh, you only have to add a few light poles, fixtures to light poles. Let me turn this off. And, and that's not turtle friendly. It, it's not turtle friendly, but neither is 3,000 So they're both out then? They're both out? No. No? Turtle friendly means that it's a wavelength that the turtle can't see. That doesn't mean that it's unfriendly to turtles. It's, it's just a, a technical term. Tur turtle friendly means that turtles can't see the light. However, if, if you install the light properly so that the light source is not seen by the turtles, it's, it works with turtles. But the term turtle friendly means that it, the light rays or the light length of wa wavelength will not be seen by turtles. That's the amber light or a red light. So the bottom line question is, when will the lights go up, and how much will it cost the town? If you just do the 4,000 K lights, you could do them tomorrow. It wouldn't cost the town anything in terms of a, an incremental cost to what we're paying today. So I call that basically free.
All right. But you are signing a 10-year lease to, to run the lights. The other lights, the current estimates are approximately $7 million to put them up. The amber lights. Amber or 3,000K, as the 3,000K exists and is provided today by F. PL. And it seemed like the council this week was almost saying, well, let's wait until new tech technology is developed. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, super ideal solution would be to have lights that could uh, switch between uh, amber or in uh, 4000K or 3000K. But when you do that, you're going to have to add a lot more light fixtures, hundreds and hundreds more light fixtures, because the amber light does not cover enough area, so you have to add many, many more fixtures. Okay, it's February 2020. Uh, when will the lights be up? I have no idea. It okay. Takes, it takes three people on a council to make an agreement, and uh, right now we don't have three people agreeing to anything. All right. The sheriff department, you, uh, you uh, brought the sheriff's department up at one of the meetings this week, at two meetings this week. It seems like you're still frustrated with the sheriff's congregating at 7-Eleven. No, I'm not frustrated with it. I just wish they would do more than congregate there. What I, do you want them to do? What are they I not want them doing? To stop bicyclists that don't have lights when it's uh, evening. I want them to stop people that have uh, electric bikes on the street and give them a ticket. I, I mean, on the sidewalk. And I'd like for them to direct pedestrian traffic there in that super congested area. If you know the, I just got an email this morning that I saw that came from a guy that was one of the longtime complainers about Oak San Carlos Boulevard and I call it North Estero, uh, that intersection that's heavily pedestrian cross, that T intersection. And he was praising the fact that the sheriff was there during a peak time and they were actually able to stop the pedestrians when they needed to, let the traffic flow. He said it was amazing. He said the difference was incredible. And we hope to be able to do that with the street light there. <clears throat> so it can be effective directing the traffic. So you either need to physically direct the traffic with, with some bodies, and I mean in this case pedestrian traffic up by the Lanikai to Crescent Street, or you have some sort of hurting device to get mm -hmm. people to walk to the sidewalks, uh, the crosswalks, and get across the street. So we're not constantly interrupting the flow of traffic. Okay. Do you think there's some kind of miscommunication between the town and the sheriff's department? It seems like they're letting one or two people walk across the light and stopping traffic, and they're, they're maybe they're congregating at 7-Eleven and should be doing more. Are they just taking money out of the pocket of the town and not really doing exactly what you want them to do? Well, I mean, we, we had a very frank conversation with, uh, with the sheriff the other day, and um, it appears that he's got the message and he understands the wants of the town. When I came through last night at 6.30 uh, through the Times Square area, the sheriff was out there directing traffic. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there wasn't any traffic last night. I guess it was the cold weather or something. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> or maybe he was just doing an outstanding job, but either direction, it was it was flowing so you know they can do a good job but it's not just the light it's that's that area down by Lonnie Kai and Crescent Street that's a problem too and eventually there's going to be three lights the light we have now one by Crescent and and you even mentioned the one that's coming up by old San Carlos correct yes, yes. when will all three lights be in do you know when I know one's coming up this year later in the year yeah the, the uh, old San Carlos light I, I don't know six to nine months it, it takes it just takes time to go through the bureaucracy of applying for things. The foot of the bridge one in Crescent Street, I'm guessing that's going to be a couple of years yet. So uh, another, I don't want to get uh, stuck on the traffic thing, but another, it, it almost sounds like Lee County does stuff on the beach without telling the town. For example, either the trolley or the tram was was stopping over by the lighthouse, and then you guys said, hey, why, why is the trolley, whatever it was, the tram or the trolley, stopping yeah. on the other side, and it stops traffic and backs traffic up. And I asked the county uh, right when you guys were having your meeting, and they said, well, on the other side, by the lighthouse, they were getting 31 people to get on. Now when they put it, the, they move it to where it stops traffic, they get 49 people. So they're getting more use out of their uh, public transportation. It almost sounded like you guys had no idea they were doing that. That's right. We don't have any idea. I mean, you know, Lee County is responsible for the Lee County. 
and uh, they don't have to ask the town permission to do things where they're in charge of doing it. Second question about that. Do you see the construction in the parking lot here? I just saw that. You, did you know that that's going to go on until April during the busiest season on the beach here? It's no. Lake County redoing the dune walkover during the busiest three months of the season. How does that make any sense? Yeah, that was sort of a surprise when I saw that. But they, they need the walkover. But during it's season. Just, well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, what is your uh, opinion on – we're talking about traffic being backed up and it being busy and all this stuff, and yet uh, you're trying to rebrand the, the town. What is your philosophy on uh, the $60,000 being spent on the rebranding company and, and what the goal is with all that? I'm, I'm for rebranding, not rebranding, establishing a brand because we, we really don't have a brand. I can remember years ago I – called the mayor when I was on one of the committees and said, well, tell me what we're standing for. What's, what's the image that you like, uh, you'd like to portray for the town? And uh, I said, I, I can't find it anywhere. And he said, well, we don't have any. And I said, well, don't you think you ought to have one? So, um, so did you like the presentation this week? I did like the presentation. I, it, uh, I didn't, there's parts of it that I thought could have been improved upon, and I voiced those. And uh, but I think that overall they did a really good job. Not a big fan of the sea turtle, though. Sea turtle? The sea? Uh, the seahorse? Right? Seahorse? <laughs> seahorse? I'm all stuck on the turtle seahorse. Yeah, I, they were I'm, very heavy on the seahorse. I've never seen a seahorse here, and uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't any. But I, I don't really buy that as the uh, emblem for the town. And um, so where does that go? When I mean, when you have a brand. Are you going to market it? Or are you going to buy ads for it? Or what's the goal, the end goal with re, uh, rebranding the town? Well, for it would become the uh, town logo on our letterheads and things and on our, on our town signs. And uh, maybe when you have uh, benches and, and things, you have that emblem on it to, to remind people of it. Um, uh, commercial people might pick up on it and use it. I don't think we're going to be paying to promote it. I mean, th this is not really a commercial thing. The idea is, is when, when you get a strategy developed, you want to get everyone working and thinking about that strategy, getting everyone moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And to me, that brand helps pull that strategy together and reminds people what we're trying to do. Just a little thing real quick. Are you in favor of having the clock here at Times Square or removing the clock? I like the idea of having a, a real tall symbol that moves, that people can see from the bridge mm -hmm. and becomes an identifying mark for the town. How frustrated are you with what's going on with TPI in Margaritaville with, uh, with Chris Patton's lawsuit and, and, and Conadieris? I don't know. I guess a 10. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's... Uh, uh, just it's it's a waste of money. It's uh, I think it's uh, vengeful as people say. Well, geez, you know, everyone has the right to do this. Well, that's true. They have the have the right, but uh, I, I think it's really pretty much out of spite. I don't think that they believe that they're going to win. I don't think they have a chance to win, and it's just um, throwing money down an endless pit. Um. Bay Oaks, they, a, bit, a lot of talk about Bay Oaks uh, this week at your management planning meeting, and uh, it's a huge project. So um, is, is Bay Oaks something the community needs to be, the town needs to be paying for? I know they, everybody says there needs to be a meeting place. Does, it's going to cost a lot of money because it seems like there needs to be a lot of repairs or, or fixes or new stuff that go in there. So what, what's your take on all that? Well, Bay, Bay Oaks is, is underutilized. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, so there could be some improvements to be made uh, for sure. Uh, however, I don't see taking on a, a giant budget of 10, 15, 20 million dollars to do it and certainly not doing, doing it alone. It, 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 if it's going to be a significant investment that the school system and the county have to be equal participants. So where do you see that going? I mean, there, there's been a lot of time and effort put into creating, it looks like a whole new 
area out there, the stage or two stages. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it was a nice visioning exercise and, and really it, you know, that's always a good idea in my opinion to start with a, a really good vision of what you would like things to be. Like, for example, when they first started a sterile boulevard, I think that would have been nice to have a really good vision of what that was going to do uh, for improving traffic flow. Mm -hmm. But they didn't even put that on the list. They, so anyhow, but I digress. <laughs> but <clears throat> they, they, do, they came out with a great vision. I mean, that's, that's the art of the possible if there was no constraints. And you really need to look that way. I mean, that's, that's the way to start and then get realistic about what you can really do. Well, where do you see that going with the new council if you're, if you're reelected? Where do you, what do you want to see happen over there? Well, I mean, I disagree with several of the current council people on, on the lot that we procured for Bay Oaks. Uh, I don't see a building going there at all. I'd like to see that lot open up and having activities on it that draw people back into Bay Oaks. Uh, this athletic field that they've uh, are going to purchase that has uh, exercise stations on it. I'd like to see that there. So people coming down the Cerro Boulevard will see that. Hey, I can go in there and do a little workout and then keep on my journey. Uh, children's playground back behind that. Uh, that's easily accessible to people on walking and biking and coming in on cars too. So I don't, I don't see that as a driveway. Uh, we've got enough driveways on the Cerro Boulevard. That's for sure. So does Fort Myers Beach need a PIO? We need to improve our communications. Well, and nobody would disagree with that, but I don't think that was the question. Well, I don't have to answer your question. That's true. I'm, I'm That's a politician. True. <laughs> supposedly. Well, you hope to be in a month, but you might be on a fishing boat. Yeah. So what is your opinion? Do you need a PIO or do you need somebody to create a Facebook page? You know, I, I don't. I don't even go to Facebook, so creating a Facebook page does nothing for me, but I guess it would be helpful to a lot of people. Um, I'm, really, I'm really torn about it. I, I, as I said, I see the need for communications. I don't think we do as much as we should be doing, so let's give this PO, PIO thing a try. Maybe we develop some systems and functions that uh, we can use in the future without having a PIO. Okay. Uh, the, the town of Fort Myers Beach seems to get a lot of grief for code enforcement. Is it fair? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to say no, it's not. But I don't know each and every individual case. I'm sure there's some cases that uh, maybe people felt that they were unfairly persecuted. Um, but that should be our goal is to eliminate that sort of feeling, you know, code enforce, <clears throat> code enforcement is supposed to be about compliance, helping people achieve compliance. So uh, it, it's it's not about penalizing people who are being punitive. So uh, we've got a, a new director now, uh, Daphne. Uh, she is very much a professional. Mm -hmm. She has lots of background. Uh, I think she's going to do a great job in turning around that perception and making it better for everyone. So um, this this election, there's going to be a referendum on the election. I, I think it's a referendum or an amendment or whatever. Yes. And it, se it almost seems like there are certain members of the council that are advocating for the uh, terms to go to four years and for the, ele I, the election to go to November. I don't think anybody would argue that having an election in November is probably a good thing when most people think an election yeah. is. But if, if the second part of that vote passes, we'll have a couple of council members that go from three years, which is what the term is now, to almost five years, th four years and eight months to make up the difference. Right, one time. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your view on a November and going to which would be four years? Going going from three years to four years? Well, the, the problem with today where you have an election on three-year terms is that every three years you have two elections. Right. And so you, you get one year off. And um, that's an awful lot. It's a, it's a lot of churning and turning. Um, it's a lot of uh, campaigning 
you know, the United States campaigns way too much. I'd, I'd like to see some of our European systems uh, put over here for our presidential election so we're not in these endless campaigns. So I'm for that. I'm for reducing those number of elections. And that takes you, go. you have to go to a four-year term to do that. And if you're going to do that, you might as well line up with uh, November with the rest of the world and get it done. Why didn't they just do November and three-year terms? And just keep them all when you're all running at the same time. Well, because if you do, oh, if you all run at the same time, all run at the same time, like everybody, like everybody else does. I mean, the House of Representatives don't they all run at the same time? And they're only two years. That's yeah. the other thing that I have a question about. If the House of Representatives can get things done in two years and run for re-election, now you might not agree that they probably should be elected longer. Why can't the town of Fort Myers, <laughs> which has six thousand people? Uh, live with three years. Why does it have to go to four? Well, the House of Representatives also has a Senate behind them, too. So it, it's it's two bodies that true, have to agree true, on everything. True. So, you know, you, you need more time than, than two years to really be effective, uh, as an, uh, in my opinion. And you need some continuity with the turnover that we've had in the past with the town staff. And if you had that same turnover with the council every two years, uh, people wouldn't be able to find anything. Um, so you, you need some continuity. For example, uh, Sanibel uh, and some of the other local towns, uh, their mayor has been in place for years and years and years. And then they develop relationships with Lee County. They develop relationships with the legislature. I agree. I agree they walk that. into meetings. People recognize them. They respect them. And, and we're rotating our mayor well, that's Annually. the next question I have for you. Why not? Why doesn't the town of Fort Myers Beach change to an elected mayor? I don't know. I guess we could need to have a referendum about that. <laughs> so you're going to vote yes on both of them? Yes? Yes. One is, okay. How would you rate the town manager? I give him really high marks. Uh, Roger is very, very, very experienced. Um, he knows how to get people to, to help that's on the outside. Um, and he's bringing discipline to a organization that needed some discipline processes, procedures, and systems. Uh, the, the town was really operating out of a notebook, basically, in, in my opinion, in, in many ways. If you try to go back and find some things, it's, it's sometimes difficult. As I mentioned in uh, a newspaper article I wrote recently to answer a question, uh, the town manager that was temporary town manager before Roger got there, he walked in the office. There was zero records in the office, nothing, no files, nothing. That's pretty pathetic. So uh, why should people vote for you? Well, it should be easy to vote yes or no for me. I've been here now for three years. If they like what I've been doing, then vote for me. If you don't like it, vote for somebody else. I mean, um, I, I'd like to think that my record speaks for itself. I've tried to be rational. I try to avoid uh, unintended consequences when we do ordinances. Um, I hope people respect my analytical capabilities and um, I'm trying to establish a good vision for the town, not a good vision, a good result of a vision for the town. So three seats are up. Who would you like to see elected with you if you are elected? Well, you know, I've, there's two of the guys that are running. I don't know if they walked in here now, or they may be in here now. I don't know. I don't know them. I've never met them, never talked to them, don't know anything about them. Uh, the other three guys running, uh, I know. I like all three of them. Can you be specific who you mean so people know? Oh, I'm talking about uh, Bill Veach, okay. uh, Dan Alders, and Jim uh, Adderholt. Adderholt. So, but I'm, I'm not saying anything bad against the two guys right. I don't know. I, I right. just don't know them. Biggest accomplishment in your three years was what? I guess really a sterile boulevard. Um, it's really obviously the Lee County thing, but uh, I was having some meetings a while back, a 
couple of years ago with uh, one of the commissioners and I was talking about the boulevard and he says, you know, we're, we're not having really good communications with the town. And I said, well, what are you talking about? So he gave me some examples and I was um, really concerned. And, and I met with Roger and uh, then as things came up with the council, we got Lee County coming to our meetings on a regular basis uh, and open up the dialogue and, and my goal and instructions and hope to Roger was that, you know, I don't ever want to hear Lee County saying we're holding up them one day. Mm -hmm. We should race ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> just, I don't even want to think that they would ever use us as an excuse. And so we have, <clears throat> we're, we're well way ahead of them and we're not holding them up and they're communicating with us and I think things are going pretty good. Who do you think should be the mayor after the election? Well, I guess it depends on who's elected. <laughs> if I'm not elected, I couldn't be the mayor. Right. Well, you know, at least two people that are going to be there, do they qualify to be the mayor? In your opinion, should they be one of them, Ray or Rex Ann? Well, do they qualify? Yeah, I mean, the qualification bar is, I, I, I started to say low, but it is low. There, there's no It's a popularity vote. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So um, Anita has been uh, part of the, uh, the government for so long, and she's uh, now the mayor who is, can't run again. Not, I'm not saying she would have, but anything you'd like to say about the impact that she's had on the town for being involved in as many years as she has? You know, I, I think she's done a good job. She's, uh, she's more tuned to the town than, than certainly I am. I mean, you know, she knows 10 times as many people as I, I do. And um, she knows the town like the back of her hand, let's say. So I, th I think she tries to do the right thing. I'm, I'm happy with her. Uh, she does, a, I think, a good job at mayor in terms of being uh, friendly to people as they come up to the podium and respectful. Um, you know, I, I appreciate what she's done. Great. Any final words to the voters? Got a big audience today. Big audience. Yeah. How, how many out there? I can't see one. <laughs> um, many words to the voters. Vote your, vote your conscience. Think about who you're, you're getting in there. They're, you know, it's, it's a real responsible job. It's, you know, I, I really uh, appreciate the people that do serve on council. Um, you know, it's, it's not national defense or anything, but it does impact people and we have to be careful with what we do. Roger, uh, Roger, I'm reading a quote, uh, a, a comment about Roger, but thank you for coming in, Bruce and good luck in the race. Appreciate it okay. very much. Thank you. All right, everybody. Bruce Butcher, town council member now running for a uh, reelection uh, in the race in March. And we appreciate him coming on always. And right now, we're going to give away our final pair of tickets for the day, dear. Okay. It's going to okay. be a, a pair of tickets, uh, the Fort Myers Tiki Tours, which is a great sponsor of ours. And um, I think I had a thought I had. A, oh, why don't you read this while I'm looking for the question? Because I know you're big on this. This is coming up. That's uh, pretty cool. Yes, we had a good time at this last year. So back again this year is high rolling at the beach. Come out and support the beach school by attending the two, 2020 high rolling at the beach event on February 22nd from 6 to 10 at the Women's Club and they are located at 175 Sterling Ave here on the beach. You can check out their fundraising page um, for details at FMB PTO annual fundraising and I will say it's a chance to, you don't have to, but it is a chance to get dressed up. Uh, everything's under a tent. There's all sorts of casino games and I whiffed out last year. What do you mean? Playing the playing the poker. You you get you give cash and you get funny money, and when it's funny money, you're like all in right away. And I what was all you, out. What did you think of Bruce? I thought it was good. I mean, I was sitting over there. I didn't pop up the phone, but so I couldn't hear clearly everything. But all right. So right now we're going to give away a pair of tickets. It's a Valentine's Day cruise on the Fort Myers oh. Tiki Tours. That gonna, would be a good place to We're going to um, do a little co Listen, that would be a good place to to propose. 
if somebody's out there and you're thinking you need a unique idea, yep. this is it. So we're going to stay on the Jay and, and no. We're going to stay on the Jay and Kylie uh, uh, boat here. Okay. Get it? And we're going to ask you to Week. tell us. Here's the number, 239-247-3833, which is really my cell phone number. So and remember, now you have it. he's going to hang, up, hang up, on up on you, you by and then we'll call you back. Right, and then we'll call you right back. What record label did Jay Allen just sign with? And you probably, if you follow anybody on Facebook, you saw that everybody was posting That's how tough. excited they were about um, – about the J signing. So 239-247-3833 is the number to call. And you will win two tickets for you and your hubby or you and your lovely lady to go out on a Valentine's Day cruise out on the you lovely beaches You and whoever of you want to take. You can take your mistress. You can take your wife. You can take your best friend. You, you know can what? take your buddy. You can take I your... don't think. Do they allow animals? I don't think you can take I your dog. I don't think you can take By the way, dog. we've, so, we've seen know, this though. question come up. On Facebook, and we've heard the council talk about it, Fort Myers Beach is dog friendly, but you have to have a leash on your dog. You can't let your dog run wild on the beach. If you bring your dog, the dog has to be a leash. That's the rule. There was so here's the, 80 here was comments the, on that one thing. The, Please. Well, here's no the question. Touching. What happens? Because the Fort Myers Beach is not completely owned by Fort Myers. Like There's parts of it that are Lee County. So what happens if you have your leash on during the Fort Myers part and then you let it off during the Lee County part and then you put it back on in the Fort Myers part? I mean, I don't just think Just leave that, the leash on the dog. There's yeah, no reason yeah, yeah. not to have I don't the leash think on that the dog. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, I'm running on the beach and most of the dogs, bar none, are very well behaved. They're very well socialized. But there's a couple that, you know, they'll like try to... Try to run with you yeah. or run next to you or they, run on they, top of you. Dogs should know better than to try and keep up with you and the speed I'm like that you flash. run at lightning. So 239-247-3833, you've had plenty of time to Google what label uh, Jay Allen has signed with. And uh, by the way, Fort Myers uh, Beach Tiki Tours, we want to talk about those guys because they've been great sponsors of mm -hmm. ours. 239 and I'm going to confuse people. This is the number if you want to call and make a reservation for a sunset tour, dolphin cruise, birthday parties, anniversary cruises, all that stuff, 887-0042, 887-0042. If you don't win the tickets, you can buy yourself a pair and have some fun down there with the Tiki Tour people. A bear, a pair, or they, they take up to like six people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, party. you can get a party boat. Oh, here we go. This is Fort Myers. This is actually the first time we've actually gotten a call from Fort Myers. Now, I hit hello, right? Right. Are you there? Hello. You have to hit the audio. Then I hit what? Audio. Yeah. Right? Okay, let's see. Hello? Hello. Yes, you're on he the air. He got it Thank right you, without dear. hanging up on Who's you. Who's calling? Who's on the air with us now? Why, this is Joy and Dan Time. Joy, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you this morning? All the way across the street. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you for calling to make it sound like we have people that are actually paying attention to us now. Oh, did you we, have, did, we watch you every morning, every Saturday morning. Thank from you so much. You should find something better to do with your life. Nah. But anyway, so what, do you know what record label that uh, Jay Allen was on the verge of signing with before he did? I do. It is Treehouse Records. Sure, it is. Yeah, okay. okay, we'll go with that. I thought it was Verge Records. That's what I wrote down. But you know oh, what? Well, that's close I enough. Know. I Googled it, and it says Treehouse Records. That's so close enough. Know. That's close enough. You're, you're our lucky winner today. Call number 30 on the hotline. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we appreciate you and uh, Deputy Dan. And uh, your phone is terrible. You, get, you, be, you better get that phone fixed there. You sound like oh, you're in a wind tunnel there. So. Thank you, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> but now I got to go look it up because I, I maybe I'm wrong. I, I thought it was you Verge wrong. Records. No, I, I, I saw him standing there with the rest the rest of the Verge crowd. She said uh, Treehouse Records. But anyway, she's going on a cruise. Hopefully she'll take Dan with her, her husband. But if not, <laughs> hey, whatever, whatever floats your boat, Joy. So uh -huh, no pun intended. I, I wanted to make sure people knew that when they came down to the beach and they see what's going on in the parking lot here. Yeah. That that's not the town of Fort Myers Beach doing that. That is Lee County deciding that they're going to do, like, that's major construction going on there at the pier. They're trying to build a, a, a they're, they're not trying to, they're, that's a $586,000 project going on right there to build 
over the they're building a dune walkover it's, it's, if it's they're going making to be, it as high as as the stakes are in right now yeah it's you're gonna need a rope to climb up i mean there. yeah it looks it's so like way a, up and, over. and everything is blocked off you can't the pier is blocked off and the sidewalk is blocked off and you can't you can't even you know you have to there, come all I'm, the way around to get here it's okay it, here we go again you no. have to walk a little bit well over you're changing people's routine, dear. That's the thing. You, you change people's routine. They well, don't like that. They're they don't trying like that. to save the dune and the okay. animals that are in the dune. I'm all for that. But here's the thing. Why would they do it during season? Like that project is going to go on until mid-April. They just started. It's going on till mid-April. I almost wet my diaper when I heard that that project is going to take until mid-April. That's, that's basically when season's over. They're doing it right through season and somebody said the reason they want to do that is so they can show the county can show the tourists that they're improving the beach hey i mean do you do think you the do, tourists right? come down here and they're like oh look construction they're, they're improving well, the beach maybe maybe and they know that they the distinguish attraction. between the town and the county and i just think that there could probably be better communication by I agree with that. Maybe when we get a new we, I don't even live on the beach, but maybe when they get a new PIO down here, this PIO can talk to that PIO and they can PIO together somehow. Yeah. Right? So you want to tell everybody about FMB Designs before we uh, <laughs> wrap it up with our final conversation? You don't want to miss our final conversation. Go ahead. So FMB Designs and Remodeling, give Nikki a call at, where's the number? The number Two, four. is. Ah. You're such a ding dong. You didn't even bring the thing. They have a Facebook page. I did bring the thing. They have a Facebook page. They have a website. Anyways. You know what they? You know the number by now. If you hear us talking about it. You know what? It it is similar to your phone number. So I always do get it twisted up. I, I'm sure any minute she's gonna post it up there. That's right. But post anyways, it on there. she's listening. Give them a call, and check out their website. They do amazing work. They do they do everything. They but they do do a lot of beach, shabby beach chic. Not shabby, just shabby. Chic. That sounds like well, crappy. it used to be called shabby chic, but now it's just beach chic, and beautiful colors that are representative of the beach. Um, they will okay, Verge Records. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. They they will bring the showroom to you. She will walk you through the process. She's very accommodating. She's very knowledgeable. She has a great design aesthetic, and there you go. Right. Thank you. For nice that. job. Very nice, dear. So the other thing I want to remind everybody about before they start hanging up on us here is if you go to our Facebook page, pinned to the top of the page is a poll. Do you want the town to keep the clock or ditch the clock? The, the, it's Vote overwhelming the already that I'm surprised it's that clock. high. I mean, I, I I'm didn't not. Think, it's, I, it's an iconic. It's not an iconic thing. It Somebody is. got on there and said it's a mass produced clock. Like you, there's one but, in Cape Coral. I'm not and, saying that it's unique. Don't get I'm an saying, attitude with well, me. I mean, I'm just why saying do you have to be it's so iconic negative? to Fort Myers Beach. I'm just trying to be even, Stephen. That's all. Oh, you're never. I even love the Stephen. clock. I, I you're love always the clock. ripping on the clock, even if the clock isn't telling the correct time. It's still. It's yeah. It's uh, part of the beach. Yeah. Well, I mean, part the the plan is the clock goes. Part of the plan is the clock goes. So. No, they need to move it or save it. Or rope it off. I think they should move it to Chris Patton's front yard. Just lift that sucker up and put it right in Chris Patton's front yard. Wouldn't that be cool? No. It's five o'clock and then just stop it at five o'clock. You know what that mm -hmm. would mean? Yeah, I think you know what it means. No. Yeah. So speaking of five o'clock somewhere, if you missed our press conference with TPI, you need to go back. We're up to like 1,500 views or some 25,000 views or a million <laughs> views or something like that. They had a press conference to set the record straight because the TV stations and the newspaper just can't get it. And uh, so you want to go back and watch that. Last night we interviewed, or I interviewed because you were at the gym, Joe Orlandini to talk about those uh, two buildings next to Junkanoo. Did you know that Junkanoo is coming down eventually? I, I do Dennis, now. I where, did as of last night, yeah. Where's Dennis Boberino going to go for his beer? Mm -hmm. Junkanoo's going down, and eventually uh, your hangout, the mermaid, is going to come down too. So less places. They're not going to move it still. I don't think no. they. I don't. I think that, that if they tried to see stick that's those things kind of iconic to the apart. beach too. I mean, the mermaid. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, things change. Uh, the new things come along. Yeah. And the last thing, go ahead. And go ahead. We go ahead. also had dinner last night. Yes, we did. With the lovely with the Debbie boss. Lalo. And her husband, John. Oh, oh, you just slighted him in the big I way. I did not. You did too. I did not. He looks 
fantastic. He does. Yes, he's, he's got the diabetes, so he lost some weight. He's he keeping his sugar great. in check. She always looks great, but he's yeah, yeah, really he's really working it. And they it was we had a lovely time. Yeah, we went to two meatballs and a pizza in the or kitchen. Something. Oh, okay. That's over it was outside a gateway, which was totally out of my comfort zone. And I will say night. that the servers there oh, he all was, very nice. Yeah. But they carry little trays. Nothing like the trays that yeah. these girls carry down here. By I the mean way, even nothing. if even if you're not coming today or you're not here today, go on to Travelocity. Is that where you go to uh -huh. do the reviews? Is that where you go? Or Expedia well, or Travelocity? What, what, where do you go to file these reviews? Yeah, what, Trip oh, Advisor. TripAdvisor. Yeah, I've never even been on that. But go to TripAdvisor and give a great review to Terry and Angela and everybody, Hope and uh, Peter and Paul and Mary and <laughs> Joseph and Jesus. They're all working here today. So go on to, uh, to TripAdvisor and give them a great today. review. And uh, but he was a good he was he was obnoxious and he was mouthy, but he was funny last night. He was he was the perfect Ooh, kind of waiter. The last thing I want to bring up there is this election. Like when these voters go to the polls, they're going to have to vote on this referendum. I, just for a minute. I thought you had like when they do the football poll, the football thing and they bring it out. I thought that that's what you had there. Like you no. were making it, your picks. Well, look, it almost it's so complicated it looks like a football poll, like you have to pick squares. But here's the deal. When you go to vote in March, you're going to have to vote number one, which is the easy one, should you move the election to November. I kind of think that's a no-brainer. I mean, most people vote in November. I was surprised when we came down here that they vote in March, but for some reason they voted in March. But number two is going to be the big one to think about. You don't have to vote yes or no on both of them. But number two is changing the terms. I think God, three years is enough. You just don't let that go. I know. I, I think three years is enough. And I know the mayor. It has nothing to do I with I love you. the mayor, and I know she's all for changing this. And she's not. she has no, uh, she has no skin in the game because she's not running. But she thinks for more cohesiveness, she sh there should be four years. So I, I get that. I'm, I just believe that three years is enough, that you give more people more time, and they just – I just don't think that any politician. You think it's there's an appreciable difference in that other in that extra year. Well, let me get to the point. Like, there, <laughs> well, there, please well, do. Well, there are three seats up for election. If they change it now, it goes to four years and eight or three years and eight months. So, let me make sure. It oh goes boy, to, math. Yeah, well, I don't, no, it goes to it goes to four years and eight months because now you have to make up March to November, mm -hmm. and then you're getting four years. So that's almost five years. So these three people that get elected are going to be in that chair for five years. I just think that's, I think. Well, that's we can committed. always have another referendum no, that well, they only get. Goofy uh, gets. I think that you should vote yes to one to go to November and no to two. Just leave but it everybody gets to make their own opinion. Okay, what would you vote? I, I, if you had a vote, what would you vote? Yes, sir. What'd you say, Peter? None of your, yes. your business, right. <laughs> So I would agree that the November thing for sure probably easy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. but the other thing is that I there's going to be a cost savings if they change it. You're going to save if you change if you vote yes on both. Right. You're going to there's zero dollars. It doesn't cost anymore for some reason. It costs seventeen thousand five hundred dollars the other way. So if you leave it in March the way it is now, if one no, if you go to November and then. Number one and number two pass, there's no money. If you go to number one failing and number two, see, this is how complicated it gets. Number one failing and number two passing, you continue to pay $17,500. If you go to number one passing and number two failing, you continue to pay $17,500. If you go number one fails, number two fails, it's $17,500. So see how, see how simple it is? Mm. Not at all. So move it to November and leave the rest the way it is, and that's the end of that. <laughs> We went to Zach Brown last week. How cool was that? Yeah, that was fun. Somebody from that Intercom called us up and said, you want two free tickets to see Zach Brown at Sunrise. And, and the were tickets like, were closed. Oh, yeah. The close. band played their guts out. They played a bunch of different songs. And you know why we'll never go to a concert unless it's free? Because parking oh. costs $30. Thirty dollars to park. You expect the beverages and the food. Like $30 you that, to park. But 30 like, I mean, 20 that was pushing it, but 30. 30. And you know what? No cash. You can only pay by credit card. Right. Well, they don't want to be messing with cash. They don't want to be getting. No, that's because the parking lot attendants are probably stealing money. No, but they might be getting rolled for their money. 
please. <laughs> Okay. Nothing like that ever happens in Miami. And so, hey, you know, I was really cracking John up last night. Really? Yes, talking about because you're talking about because you go to bed so early. Yeah. And I was saying I wish our daughter was back because you go to bed at six o'clock at night. So every night I'm up eating dinner. I'm I'm all alone. So I said I need all a alone. nighttime husband because I have a daytime husband. So I need a nighttime. Interesting. Husband. And John thought that, that was quite funny. I didn't like, hear that. Like a friend, not really like a platonic yeah, sure. husband. Mm, whatever. Yeah, whatever you say. For the evenings that can do stuff around the house because not your strong suit. Sorry. No. no. Sorry. Not My strong, strong suit, suit is what's up here. Your sister called me the other day to ask if we had a ratchet extension. And I said, Well, I'm not at home. Why don't you have your brother check the garage? And uh -huh. she was like, You know, this is as silence. long as we've gone without you complaining that we've gone too long. So, oh, wow, look at that. All right, 10, we got to wrap it up. Well, I, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, but I completely, uh, it's completely lost my mind. Oh, after you said the right. uh, the two husband thing, does that mean a two wife thing too, or does that? <laughs> Good luck. Yes, you can. Let's see if you can find somebody. All yes. right, I think you need that's a, a daytime. You're throwing out there. A daytime wife. Yes, please. Hey, please, um, somebody take some of this oh, off shut me. Up. That's this is such a heavy burden. Hey, no, I did want to thank um, Dr. Bill for coming on and really, you know, reaching out to people. If you know somebody that would, you know, do the farm, be a friendly farmer or to please consider donating to his project because it's not going to get done if he's going to have to wait on government funding. And, you know, it, it would move it along a lot quicker. We would get the water quality back up at you're so negative about water quality I, until, water thing. I know. yeah, until you have some dis dreaded disease, and like, then you're going to be all like, like oh, plankton, like the plankton I got at the bottom of my feet. Well, I'm going to give you some. No, plankton. so the last thing I wanted to say was last night at the dinner with John and and Debbie, uh, something strange happened. Uh, he said that he thought I was a cross between Kevin, <laughs> uh, Kevin, what's his name, from James, uh, Kevin James from uh, what, what show was that? I think it's King and Queen. King, King of Queens King and of Les Queens. Nessman. <laughs> so that's like, isn't Les Nessman dead now? Or he's like 90 years old. Wasn't and, that from and the WKRP King, in yeah. Cincinnati? Let's wow. Do a big turkey drop. No, and then Kevin James is like, he's like 300 pounds. He's a big fat dude. Hey, I mean, that's not true. Oh, come on. He's a, he's a little on the hefty side. Hefty, hefty, hefty. So I think we're going to keep doing the Friday night conversation thing. You I think I you're like going to keep doing that? Yeah, yeah. I, I have, I'm having some fun. I like, <laughs> well, as long I, as you're having Anybody fun. that you'd like us to interview, uh, just send in some suggestions. to the Send it to the suggestion box at beachtalkradio.com. I just made that up. doesn't exist. But by the now, everyone has my phone number. So. That's right. Yeah. So thank you all so much for listening. And good luck to all the candidates next week. Forrest Kritzer. We'll be on oh, he's gonna at uh, 930. He's our last candidate in the crew. They are going to have, uh, oh, by the way, Robert Barant never got Nothing. back. He does, do not vote for him. Zero votes. Because if you don't come on our show, you're not worth anything. And you know he's against TPI and he's part of that whole Condottieres clan. So you want to <laughs> vote no for him. And so Forrest Kritzer will be on. And we will see you uh, on the Facebook and and hanging around in the community and, you know, with our what ass What are you going to get me for Valentine's Day? Nothing. We don't do that holiday. It's like a Halloween holiday. It's something we pass. So uh, thank you, everybody. And we love you all. And have a great holiday season. And bon voyage. Holiday season.